We've compared investment banking careers to private equity, but today we're discussing careers in investment banking to careers in hedge funds. This video is kindly being sponsored by the amazing team over at NOAA, News Over Audio. The first 250 viewers to hit the link in the video description below and use the code AFSAL50 at checkout will get a massive 50% off an annual NOAA subscription. What is going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're discussing a frequently asked question and a video that a lot of you have asked for, and that is what is the difference between investment banking careers and working for a hedge fund? We'll be comparing six of the key differences and similarities between the two, namely top companies in the investment banking space, top hedge funds, how easy is it to break in, the differences or similarities in the nature of the work, base salaries and bonuses, hours and work-life balance, and progression as long-term careers, and much more. Make sure you smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm and if you're in a hurry you can skip around using the timestamps that are linked in the video description and without any further ado let's get straight to it. All right so investment banks typically Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, Moelis & Co, Lazard, Evercore, so on and so forth. These are specialist investment banks and bold bracket investment banks and they partake or they are involved in corporate advisory and we'll go into what exactly that means in a bit. And then you've got hedge funds. So some of the largest and most popular hedge funds include Bridgewater Associates, AQR Capital, Man Group, Two Sigma, and Millennium, among others. How easy is it to break in to banking versus how easy is it to break in to a hedge fund? So the typical route to break into the investment banking division of an investment bank or you know corporate advisory is you know do your spring week at uni, secure an internship, and then convert that internship into a grad scheme offer. And that's the typical route you take to break into investment banking. However, it's not the same for breaking into a hedge fund. It's trickier to break into a hedge fund. And that's purely because there aren't as many companies, there aren't as many opportunities for students and graduates. And typically it's a lot more competitive given the lack of headcount. And so if you want to break into a hedge fund, you typically go and do a year or two at an investment bank or three in some cases, and then make that move over to a hedge fund. It's easier to break into a hedge fund from investment banking, or if you're a trader in a specific or relevant desk, or you were in equity research since you'll be doing similar work. When I say similar work, it's things like researching companies, understanding how companies are valued, understanding what's going on in the markets, so on and so forth. It's rare for hedge funds to take graduates out of university straight away. However, more and more, some of the bigger hedge funds are taking on graduates, but still this is nowhere near the amount as typical investment banks are taking in terms of grad scheme hires. nature of the work. What exactly do you do in investment banking versus what exactly do you do in hedge funds? So a lot of the work is quite similar but very different at the same time. It's important to understand in investment banking you are playing an advisory role. You are advising your clients on mergers, on acquisitions, on how to raise money, on how to restructure a business. Whereas in the world of hedge funds, you are not advising, you are taking money from your clients and you're investing it into different parts of the market, into different companies in order to make a return. So in investment banking, your clients would typically be large companies, institutions, governments, etc. Whereas in hedge funds, your clients will be high net worth individuals, wealthy family offices, or institutional investors like pension funds and endowments. Hedge funds typically don't target returns relative to a benchmark. They target absolute returns. And so they are always trying to knock the lights out. They're taking big risks, taking big bets. They multiply the size of their bets by taking on leverage. What is leverage? You basically take on debt in order to increase the size of the bets that you're taking in the markets. And so they can be quite risky. However, they do this with the aim of getting returns over a shorter time period compared to the nature of investment banking, which focuses on a more longer term client relationship because the deals that you're working on in the investment banking division typically can take anywhere between months and years, whereas hedge funds are taking a view on trades that are a lot shorter in terms of time horizon. Investment banking typically makes money from advisory fees. So the larger the deal size, the larger the fees you can expect. Whereas hedge funds differ in that they take a fee from managing. So managing a portfolio or managing money, they get a fee and then they get a fee for performance. 
So back in the day, it used to be two and 20, 2% management fee, 20% performance fee. So they get 20% of the profits generated. But nowadays the market has changed a lot. And so these fees have come down. It's gotten a lot more competitive. And so now it's not two and 20, it's 1.5 and 15 for the most part. The grant work in investment banking typically includes creating pitch books, working on Microsoft PowerPoint, working on Excel, modeling and valuation techniques on Excel to value companies, to predict the future estimate or future value of a company and general admin work. The grunt work as a junior in a hedge fund is quite similar. You're gonna be working on presentations, pitch books. You're gonna to need to apply your experience and knowledge of valuation techniques and research in order to analyze and kind of understand investments or potential investments that might go into an investment portfolio. As well as this, you're gonna be expected to keep up to date with what's going on in the markets, especially for the specific segment or sector that you are working in or on. Brand name is powerful. So I touched on this in the private equity versus investment banking video. Brand name is powerful. So if you're in investment banking, you might work for a Goldman's or a JP or a Morgan Stanley. These all have very strong brand names. A lot of people outside the world of finance know about these companies. Whereas if you work for a hedge fund, if you work for Bridgewater Associates, a man group, so on and so forth. Most people outside the world of finance or hedge funds specifically might not have heard of these companies. And so the brand names don't hold much weight outside of the hedge fund industry or the finance industry. So that's something worth considering. Commercial awareness is vital, regardless of whether you're an intern, a graduate analyst, a managing director, so on and so forth. It's always important to stay up to date with not just what's going on in the markets, but what's going on in the world in general. And this brings me on to today's sponsor, Noah News Over Audio. Noah is an audio app that lets you listen to thought-provoking journalism that you might otherwise not have time to read. They don't focus on breaking news, instead Noah focuses on in-depth analysis and opinion. If you're like me and you enjoy reading the Financial Times, The Economist, Bloomberg, Harvard Business Review, etc etc the NOAA app includes articles from these and many more premium publishers what's more a dedicated team of expert editors handpick the best articles and craft topic specific series to help you understand the story behind the news and so one app gives you a ton of perspectives one series that I recently listened through during a run was why Citadel was the next target of reddit investors it covered how and why reddit investors turned and targeted Citadel Citadel, as you might know, is a famous hedge fund and how Citadel and Citadel Securities caught the attention of lawmakers after the whole GameStop frenzy, which I'm sure a lot of you probably heard of. And it also touched on why high frequency traders are in the spotlight most recently. This series had three episodes and the best thing about the series is that each episode was curated from a different publisher. So episode one was from The Telegraph, episode two was from Business Insider, and episode three was from The Economist, which is pretty cool. Personally, I really enjoy the fact that there are tons of series and categories that you can explore. Now, you can get a free one week trial if you hit the link in the video description below, and also the first 250 viewers to hit the link in the video description and use the code AFSAL50 at checkout will get a massive 50% off an annual NOAA subscription. base salaries and bonuses. This typically varies from firm to firm, but yes, if you are working at a hedge fund, you can expect base salaries and bonuses to match, if not be greater than working in the investment banking division. But it's important to note that when you work for a hedge fund, it's really a long-term game. And as with anything, there are pros and cons. So working for a hedge fund is a lot more risky than working for an investment bank. Most of the money or the big money that you hear about in hedge funds is made when you become a portfolio manager. This typically takes 10 to 15 to 20 years. So, you know, when you get right to the top, that's when the big bucks are made. And typically, you know, before that, you're still earning a lot of money. You're earning most than any other industry, um, given your level of experience and years in the industry. And so it's very lucrative. It's it pays more than the investment banking division and we'll talk about the hours in a second but yeah most of the big bucks are made right at the top as with any industry earning lots of money when you become a portfolio manager or when you climb to the top does depend on your performance your investments whether they are you know generating good returns there's no point working for a hedge fund that is losing money you're not going to get paid anywhere near as much as one that makes large profits at the end of every year over the long run your earning potential is definitely higher working for a hedge fund compared to 
corporate finance and so if that's something you're interested in it's something worth knowing but as previously mentioned this comes with higher career risk a lot of hedge funds close because they have a huge loss or a very bad year that you know can't sustain the hedge fund staying in operation for another year or two so that comes with the risk that they take the leverage that they take and you know when it works they make lots of money when it doesn't work they risk all the careers of the people that work at that given hedge fund. Typical salaries for first, second and third year analysts and associates at investment banks would be anywhere between $100,000 and $300,000. At hedge funds, it will be anywhere between, I would say, $150,000 and $400,000. This includes the base salary and the bonus component of their salary. So hours, work-life balance, hedge funds win here. Typically in the world of investment banking, corporate finance, you're working extremely long hours, 80 to 100 hour weeks plus sometimes. And so 16, 17 hour days, five days a week, sometimes you're working on weekends. In contrast, hedge funds, you typically are working 12 hour days. You get in earlier than you would in corporate finance. You need to get in before markets open. So you might be in at 6, 7 a.m. And then you would leave at 5, 6, 7 p.m. And so it's a 10, 11, 12 hour day. The hours are a lot shorter. They're not a nine to five, obviously but they're a lot shorter than working in the investment banking division. So hedge funds, shorter hours, more pay, win-win, but it's harder to break in. And working for a hedge fund carries a lot more risk in terms of your career compared to working in corporate finance. Hedge funds are very results driven. And so there's less of a FaceTime culture compared to investment banking, where there tends to be quite a big FaceTime culture, long hours, sit on the desk until stupid o'clock and work. progression and exit opportunities. In investment banking, typically you move from an analyst to an associate in two or three years, and then from an associate to a vice president or director in another two or three years. And then not everyone makes managing director, but those that do, it could be three, four, five, six, seven, eight, so on years. And so that's the typical progression route for corporate finance. In hedge funds, it's kind of similar. Typically the most junior people have already one, two or three years of experience, typically in investment banking, or another relevant type of role. So you join as a junior analyst or a research associate, and then you've got analysts and senior analysts with three to five years experience. And then you would become a junior portfolio manager or junior trader. And then, you know, only the cream of the crop after five, 10, 15 years become portfolio managers or senior or head traders. And that's where most of the money is made. So the ceiling for potential earnings in hedge funds is a lot higher than that in investment banking. And the reason for that is when you are a portfolio manager at a hedge fund, Fund, you are responsible for the success and failure of a portfolio. So if you are managing a portfolio and it returns X billion dollars over the year, you're going to be responsible for that. You're managing that. And so you get a fat chunk of that, right? The results are kind of in your hands. If they are poor, your bonus is going to be smaller. If they are massive, then you get to, you know, get a good share of that. Also, it's important to note investment banks and corporate advisory, all of these areas are typically regulated very heavily. Hedge funds are less regulated and so you can take a lot more risk, which naturally increases the potential return of any investments that you participate in. So this presents a higher potential return on your bonus or the salaries that you can expect and negotiate as a hedge fund manager. In terms of exit opportunities, investment banking does give you broader exit opportunities, although hedge fund exit opportunities are very strong, but they can be quite niche. So typically hedge funds can be quite niche and focused. So you've got event driven hedge funds, global macro hedge funds, hedge funds that only invest in the equity space, hedge funds that only invest in the fixed income space, so on and so forth. So if you work for a hedge fund and you stay there for a while, you're probably going to be a specialist in that specific niche, right? And so when you want to move away from that, your exit opportunities are most likely going to be focused around that niche that you've kind of built an experience or expertise in. And so you're quite pigeonholed. When you're in investment banking, it's a lot broader. And so your exit opportunities are a lot broader as well. In terms of leaving a hedge fund, most people go and start their own hedge fund move to another hedge fund or go and do an MBA in order to kind of rebrand themselves and then go into, I don't know, banking. It's very rare to move from hedge funds to banking, but some people might do an MBA and go do management consulting, start their own business, etc., etc. My personal advice to you is it depends on your goals and aspirations. Honestly, I would say if you can break into a hedge fund and you know that's what you wanna do, go for it. See if you like it or not. It's easier to go and work for an investment bank or do corporate advisory for a few years and then make that move. 
but it comes down to your long-term goals, what you want from your career, what you're passionate about, and where your aspirations and ambitions lie. If you know you can't be bothered for 80 to 100 hour work weeks, then maybe investment banking isn't for you, but then this might reduce your chances of breaking into a hedge fund. So it's something to be aware of. Yes, you can make a lot of money working for a hedge fund and in investment banking, but typically the big bucks come, you know, after 10, 15 or so years. Keep in mind the role that brands play for your career. So working for a Goldman or a JP has that brand stamp on your CV or resume going forward, and that's quite powerful. Working for smaller unknown firms don't have that brand power when it comes to exit opportunities, but if you've got no options, then it's always good to go for the experience so you have something on your CV as opposed to having nothing to talk about. For those of you wondering, will an MBA or a master's or CFA help me break into a hedge fund? Probably CFA will help you more than a master's or an MBA, but they aren't guaranteeing you anything. So it's not like if you have a CFA or an MBA or a master's, you are automatically getting a seat at a hedge fund. What's better than all of those things is relevant experience. So previously working in corporate finance, equity research on a relevant trading desk, so on and so forth. But yeah, check out this video if you wanna learn about investment banking versus private equity, if that's something you're interested in and subscribe to see more videos on things like investment banking versus hedge funds versus venture capital versus private equity versus asset management versus trading versus private banking, so on and so forth. The list can go on and on. Thanks for staying to the end and I will see you in the next video. Peace.